that's what it is. And I think it will uh, uh, live and die with uh, this. So we see Firenze here, male team against uh, Bordeaux, the Frogs uh, of Bordeaux. Yes, let me France see. We are in this here. game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with a skittle here helping you both. Um, this is a triangular for the uh, 11, 12, and 13 plays uh, for the male category. So it's uh, in that category we have uh, the frogs uh, from Bordeaux, we have Firenze, and we have uh, Boston. And yesterday we had one of these uh, games between Firenze and Boston that uh, almost took our breath away, really, <laughs> 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 with penalty shooting and a lot of drama. <laughs> and it was really, really nice. Uh, a game that went in favor so of Boston. So Firenze was in ball possession trying to get into the rhythm around uh, the... French basket stopped, tackled, and now uh, France, the French uh, team, is in ball possession back and forth, heavy for checking in the middle of the pool. Um, nice work. Both teams try to get into their rhythm. None of them have uh, found it yet. We're within the first uh, minute uh, in this first half here. Firenze in white from Italy. in the Champions Cup and Firenze is uh, uh, we say in Germany an Alte Hase an old rabbit uh, in this tournament until now uh, we haven't seen French France making it into the half of uh, Italy uh, the forechecking of Italy in the middle of the pool is quite good stopping everything France has to put into uh, the water I'm with you in a second, Wolf. I'm just working out the schedule for the semi-final. And the Italy had a little bit more of chances going close to the basket, but they don't have the number of players underwater to really threaten the basket of the frogs. Ah, that ball was easily stolen away by an Italian player. It's a back and forth, a little bit an advantage of Italy right in front oh there was a kick with a foot well done by the defense and the frogs in ball possession now the first time going into the half of italy but the frog player there all alone the number seven i cannot see right we go up to the surface above the italian basket I'm almost, almost there. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Elena. It's the, the way the Champions Cup is played is very intense. It's two times ten minutes, that's true. But uh, from the teams here, nobody complains about that because it's the intensity and the variety of games you can have within three days against international teams, which is quite special uh, for a family event we have here. Here, an Italian player is stealing uh, the defense away but uh, I think it's number two, I think it's Gabriele, uh, the team captain from Italy. But his teammate uh, didn't make it through to him with the ball. The team play of the Italians does not allow them that much to, to threaten the basket of the frogs from Bordeaux. Well, they, they, they are the last quite good. Sorry. In ball possession uh, and uh, another attack from the open side, but it's the positioning of the Italian players under the basket is not enough to be a real danger in this moment. Then ball falls down in the hand of a French player who now can push through to the basket of Italy, and we have a one on one situation one on two Frox players right in front of the Italian basket. And this is the first time we see them.
Yes, I agree here within the live stream chat with whatever the third. Uh, it's it, different formats between Champions Cup and uh, EuroLeague. Different ideas behind it. Okay, back to the game. So, we are here. Remember, these teams are playing a triangular together with Boston for the 11, 12, and 13th place position of the male category. Uh, yesterday, Bo Boston won against Firenze. And let's see now what happened between... Uh, Frogs of Bordeaux and the Italian team. There was a very tough game yesterday between Boston and, and Firenze. And there was the last, uh, f the, almost one of the last uh, games of the day. So, you know, Italy was up until late and then early in the morning again. We have now an attack to the Italian basket. Uh, let's see if uh, the Italian team can regain the, the ball. Or now we have the blue team in possession of the ball. Been going to the surface, uh, getting catching some air, and now maybe coming onto the goalie of the Italian team from the close corner. But uh, the Italian um, four checkers are doing a good job trying to keep uh, the attackers at least uh, in, a, in a far distance. Now we have almost an attack <laughs> to the basket, but in the last minute um, was a withdraw there. So we have now the blue player. Passing to the close corner. Still, they're around, they're close to the basket, but not really a dangerous threat uh, to the uh, Italians. Um, now we are coming to blue players on the close corners trying to attack the goalie, but the Italians are defending and uh, bringing up the player with the ball. But still, Bordeaux is in possession and uh, coming now, oh, one against chance. one. This is a oh, this and is a goal. That was a great, mm. great huge, attack. It was Valentina. Um, huge mistake. Uh, there was no defense by Italy. Huge mistake and there by was Italy. Two attackers coming. <coughs> Sorry about my coughing. Uh, so it's a one-zero lead for the Frogs from uh, Bordeaux. Um, and uh, defense mistake by Italy immediately used to score by the French team as a newcomer at the Champions Cup. You're watching game three here on the third day of uh, the Champions Cup 2019. It's the 31st Champions Cup ever. So, uh, yes, we have a long tradition here. Italy now in ball possession above the French basket. Ball on the surface. We have now uh, the Italians trying to attack uh, uh, on the French side and uh, still being also kept uh, quite away by the defenders of, of the Frogs. Now we have uh, Gabriele. Oh. And then a goal. Fantastic nice. attack. Well that done. Was, uh, I was really one on one also. Yeah. also uh, uh, the same uh, mistake no, like yeah, uh, before. I just wanted to say also no. A uh, timeout by the Frogs, so we can talk about that situation. There was no defense, and Gabriele came uh, from above, pulling the goalkeeper away and pushing the ball in to the basket. So it's 1-1, uh, and uh, everything is open now again for both teams. Experience-wise, I think uh, it's uh, in favor of Italy, but um, Italy does... They, they are not getting their rhythm. They are not getting their team play up to really push Bordeaux into the defense and keep them there to start working, opening up space and Well, uh, I think chances. they might be tired. I mean, they had uh, yesterday the uh, game before the last one and it was like at, at, at 9 or something like this. Until he, they left, it was like 10 o'clock and... It's already nine in the morning. They are playing, so um, and it was a tough game against Boston. It took everything. They had, we, we had penalties. It, you know, we had really a lot of of, of uh, positive stress. I mean, it was really stressful because it was a very very tight match. Um, and those are things get really to your bones. And this is the last game uh, for them, I think. Let me see. Here we go. Back in the game. Yeah. Uh, that pass was far too long into the hands of Italy. But intense for checking here by Bordeaux. Very well done. Uh, covered the ball. Lost it again. And out of uh, 
the playing area. We have less than a minute in the first half. Free throw for the um, blue team, Frogs. Another call from the referee. Free throw against Bordeaux. Really impressive performance by Bordeaux here. Um, for a young team, they are, uh, you can see room for improvement in their game, but nevertheless, they do quite well. In the second game, the second goal here, another attack from above into the basket of Bordeaux. I didn't see who scored. And end of the first half here, game number three on day three. Champions Cup 2013. So it's always great to see new teams coming to the Champions Cup. Uh, like last year, we had uh, Singapore. Uh, Key with his team uh, was here. And this year, it's the first time we have a French team at the Champions Cup. Uh, the Frogs from Bordeaux. And uh, in the contents and the social media, we know how important it is for teams to participate in the Champions Cup. It's, uh, it's, it's like Wimbledon or whatever. It, it, it is really like a feeling of if you, as a team, make it to the Champions Cup, you're a member of uh, the, the professional rugby family community. And... It's, it's the whole atmosphere um, around the pool with the teams that makes this uh, makes this event so special. Like I said, uh, in the last days you have uh, really tough games, really focused, intense games. But on the other hand, uh, around the pool it's like the family atmosphere and connecting exchanging uh, numbers and contacts and uh, probably you cannot measure how much uh, the 31 years of uh, Champions Cup, formerly Master Cup, contributed to the development of underwater rugby in the world, giving new teams a chance to compete on a high level and uh, we had the discussion on every Champions Cup so far. Um, if uh, teams like uh, newcomers like Bordeaux uh, should be allowed to play against top teams like uh, Molde or the Colombians, but don't underestimate the push you give uh, to a team to play against these top level teams. It's an honor and uh, a high learning curve to be able to play against those established high-level teams. So we are already uh, looking forward to the party tonight, uh, which will be in the same um, old sports hall uh, near Ostkreuz in Berlin. Um, always uh, one of the top events of the year. And here we go back again in the game. Firenze from Italy in white, um, leading with a 2-1 against the Frogs. Uh, Bordeaux from France in white, uh, in blue. Oh, right. So I'm back and we see here now the French team trying to attack uh, on the Italians. And uh, they're coming, uh, one with the ball on the close side, one on the open side. Uh, um, still, they keep at the far distance. I mean, the Italians are in position, but there's not a lot of uh, fighting there. I mean, the, the, the blue team is... Uh, 
with the ball, but it's not really attacking, and Italy is just waiting for them to maybe come closer. Now we have a little bit more of movement. Um, the Italians are trying to recover the ball there in the corner. And um, now still the French try to come and attack, but they do it uh, not uh, in a very strong way. So Italy is not having really problems to defend. And Italy is winning 2-1. It's eight minutes from the second half. Um, probably they might be tired. They had the, the game before the last one yesterday. And uh, it's good. I think, you know, I think it's a good tactic what they're doing. They're just lying. They're in position. But they're waiting the French to come. And the French are just moving the ball two or three meters away. Not really coming. Always one guy at a time. If they really want to score, to at least have a try to go for penalties, they need to move um, the wave of attack a little bit more. And now they have one position on the right, and the guy went up with the ball. I mean, they should stay deeper and closer. Now, great pass run up to the 22 that was there in the open side, trying to attack, still fight against the defender of the Italian team. There's a big bulk of people, and Italy recover. But uh, something is like holding without ball, so it's a free throw for the blue team. Daniel, Colombia se jugó el partido anterior a este. Orcas masculino ganó 2 a 0 contra Finlandia y ahora eh, luego viene el, el equipo femenino. Creo que es el, es el partido a las 10 de la mañana. Orcas con Akar en las niñas. A las 10 hora, hora alemana. So, coming back to this game, we have now Firenze in possession of the ball, trying to attack, but again, 2-1. They don't really need to go into any risky situation. They fa definitely have to continue position of the ball and attacking, not just only having the ball around, because that normally create mistakes that lead to uh, goals. But uh, they don't need to go and fight against three. They can really move the ball around. And now we have the next attack on the goalie. Gabriele Chiani uh, was trying, but uh, apparently holding and there's a free throw for uh, the Italian team and uh, Antonio stole the basket there and uh, it's taking a little bit and now well, <clears throat> um, the next Italian player is there covering the basket but he was yeah holding himself to the basket you're not supposed to do that so they, I think that was the reason why they uh, lost the, the free throw. And now it is for the frogs, which are in blue. Hello, Lorena, back again. Still a um, two to one uh, lead for Fidenzi, as I see. <clears throat> And we have uh, five minutes left, so it's, uh, this game is not safe yet for Fidenze. No. And the frogs are in ball possession, mm -hmm. swimming around the basket of Fidenze. And the team effort here is uh, pretty good from the frogs, but uh, they're struggling a little bit with their passes, which are uh, too easy to intercept for Italy. But I have to say, as a newcomer team, the Frogs show a good performance here. Yes. And I'm curious uh, to see them in the future. Italy in ball possession and going now again for the French basket. Andrea here was in ball possession. One no, Italian trying... player tries to struggle his way into the defense all by himself. Tackled up to the surface right above the French basket. Dangerous situation uh, with the uh, ball drops right above the basket is always a tricky point. Now the Italians are trying to get uh, an attack organized, and now they're coming there. But uh, you know, 
the, the foretaking of the uh, French team is, is good and it's keeping them away. They need to recover the ball. They have less than four minutes if they want to score. There's still, still possibility, but they need to be more active and recovering the ball and then swimming towards the Italians. And now we have an attack, two against two. Great for checking, pulling up ball and the player recovering off uh, the ball for the blue team and now trying to bring the ball over the middle field and now we have a counter attack and he has a possession of the ball and um, it's not having anyone just right now passed but I was um, for the counter attack too slow because then Italy could get into position and then are waiting to come three minutes to go and France needs to get closer to the basket and do a couple of attacks and go into some risk if they want to score at this point. If they lose 2-1 or 3-1, doesn't make a difference. But if they continue being at this distance, they're not going to achieve any, any dangerous situation. Or what do you think? Yep. I again agree with you, Lorena. Very good. I know. Makes you happy. And another attack from above uh, into the defense of Italy. But the Italians do a good job now keeping uh, the Frogs away. And uh, with the less experienced uh, uh, teams in these tournaments, it's easier if you put up your good defense and just keep them playing and then intercept like the Italians do right now. So Italy could play this game for a while now. They are good in defense. Um, they Most of them played at the uh, World Championship in uh, Graz. And we saw their uh, quite stable defense when they are... Uh, the Italians? Yeah, Italy in their own basket <laughs> area. So less than two minutes left. Italy in ball possession. Going forward, up. But nice forechecking by the Frogs. They immediately, if they lose the ball, they are uh, attacking again. And then this uh, successful in this moment. And uh, the ball was snatched away again. It's back and forth. Italy in ball possession. One minute and a half. And the Italians are going to start, you know, swimming with the ball. <laughs> Staying away. I mean, they don't need. Two two, they had to go to penalties and they lost in penalties. So I think they're it's not tough. going to. Yeah, we have Gabriel Kenny there trying to attack together with um, another of the Italian players, but France is defending well. I think as Antonio. Less than a minute. Passing toward the corner to the next Italian player, and I think they're trying to just stay there and just be in control of the ball. Yeah, no. He just went and attack again three blue players, and now it's a forty. This is the kind of thing you should not do. When you are winning 2-1 and it's the last 30 seconds. That was risky. Great recovery uh, from the Italian side. And now that dangerous. He's staying on the open side where the new players are coming into the pool. So that's... Um, and with the back to that... Half a minute oh, left. They stole the basket. Now the Italians are trying to bring the ball to see if they can score another oh, goal. Almost the bus pass to the one stoning, stealing the basket. But uh, he was covered by French players and they now recover Counter the ball. attack by Bordeaux. It's the last possible attack. So now they need to go in with all of the players, Bordeaux. 2-1 for Firenze. Let me write that down. All right. Um, is it the, the first uh, win for Italy? Um, mm, I don't remember yesterday. So it's a one, uh, it's two, too many two games. one uh, lead for Italy here in the fourth game of day three of the Champions Cup 2019. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
women are now already in position number 10 is Connecticut, Connecticut Macos and in position number 9 is Helvetia. And now the what the game for today, I mean, uh, for the one, second and third place, uh, we have a triangular between Lang and the German team, Orcas, uh, the Colombian team, and Akaren, the Norwegian team. And for the position four, five, or six, uh, we have also a triangular within the, within the women that is uh, Black Mermaid from Sweden, Amaga from Denmark, and um, let me see. Where is the other? One second. I had it. Well, help me here. Which yes. team am I missing for the four, five, and six? Hold on. Black Mermaid, Amaga, um. and Vienna. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. And Vienna. And then still Firenze and Barcelona are playing uh, for the 7th and 8th place. So the next game is from the triangular that goes to the positions 4 to 6. And after that game, we have then uh, Orcas versus Akaren, uh, 